Hello and welcome to the next episode of my series in the landscape photographer profiles and today I'm going to travel to Kerry to Killarney to meet with a photographer by the name of Terry McSweeney and Terry is a very interesting photographer he's an extremely nice guy he um, traveled actually with myself to England last September when I went to uh, go to a talk by uh, Thomas Heaton if you haven't um, seen the series of videos that we did there in the uh, area of uh, Liverpool and up into the Lake District I'll link to them here but I had a really good time with Terry and it was something that I wanted to do with Terry for a long time but now we can finally manage to get ourselves together to be able to uh, record this episode. Terry is um, a corkman. He's living in um, Kerry, just outside Killarney, and he's also very involved with the Killarney Camera Club, having been uh, voted photographer of the year, I think it was two years ago, and he's chairman of the camera club now as well. So I'm going to go on an adventure with him, and I'm going to follow the sequence that I normally do on these um, interviews. So. You're going to see in a moment three images from Terry's portfolio. Um, I'll meet up with Terry then, we'll have a chat, I'll ask him five questions, he'll give me the answers to that, you'll be able to see those, and then I'll share uh, three images from uh, the shoot with Terry uh, that we're gonna get uh, in the afternoon. So uh, come join me and um, let's go on an adventure and we'll get to know more the photographer that is Terry McSweeney. Funny faces now. I generally like to do landscape and seascape uh, photography, but I really like trying to get off the, the beaten track and uh, find my own compositions, so, and to, to kind of challenge myself. So I try and find, either go to a familiar place and try and find new compositions, or, you know, find out my own places by using maps and apps to try and, um, you know, find things off the beaten track. I, I use Canon gear. I started off with uh, a 450D uh, camera with kit lens, and I went. I start. I joined a camera club in Killarney, and the first thing I learned there was the importance of good glass. So I bought a second-hand uh, 24 to 70 L series lens, and uh, that was really, really made a huge difference. And then I went on a few workshops, and I uh, one of the guys there was telling me that uh, full-frame sensors make a big impact to your photography. So again, I, I upgraded to a 5D Mark II, which I still have, with a 24 to, or 16 to 40 L-series lens, uh, which is on the camera at the moment. So, so I've been with those for a good few years, and uh, about a year ago, I bought a 70 to 200 uh, 2.8 L lens, and there's, they're my three main lenses. Uh, so I kind of saved up to get good glass and I think it's made a, a big big difference and uh, the tripod I have at the moment is um, it's a new one it's a carbon fiber Novo uh, tripod that I bought online with um, a Novo ball head that has a panoramic um, swivel at the top which makes it great for panos and I brought that to Iceland on a recent workshop that uh, I was on with uh, Rodney O'Callaghan was running and uh, it worked really well. It's very easy for hiking because I like getting off the beaten track. So like one of the main things that I like to do is make things easy for me when I go off you know, on uh, hikes and stuff. So getting light gear, 
having all my gear in a rucksack so it's always in the back of the car so I don't need to worry about uh, have I brought stuff I always leave it in the back of the car so uh, just things that will enable me to be able to do things easily without having a hassle about it um, I have my trusty strap that I'd never leave go of because I kind of get anxious when I see tripods left alone because I have a tripod fall over on me and it smashed some of my um, some of my filters I, I use Lee filters so uh, this is a peak design strap that uh, kind of clips into the camera really easily so it's very very uh, versatile and it makes it easy to hold a camera without digging into the back of your neck so that's the only thing I've ever bought through a Facebook ad so I think that's and I have a whole set of uh, Lee filters in, in a, you know, a handy pouch like this to make it, again, easy and less hassle when you're taking out your lenses or your uh, filters. Like one of the things I learned, one of the first things I learned about landscape photography was that I thought that, you know, people just went out and took shots and I realized quickly that you uh, have to plan your shots to get, you know, to get more likely get a, a good shot. So I would, you know, work out where the sun is uh, during the day. What if it's a tidal area? What way the tides are? And then um, I would be. I wouldn't put my tripod on or my camera on the tripod first thing. So I'd look around, kind of uh, scout the area with my camera in my hand, just getting compositions. And then when I'm happy with the composition, I would uh, put it on the tripod. And I'm often looking, you know, low angles as opposed to always taking uh, angles at eye level. So, so at the moment now, I'm hoping to get out into the flow of the water here at uh, Derry Cunahy Falls, because I've never, there's a lot of trees breaking the lines here. I've never gone in uh, into the middle of the flow. So I have wellies and uh, kind of waterproof trousers. So. Hopefully I won't get too wet later on. <laughs> so, in a, so my top tip, I know the other photographers uh, on this series have given lots of tips. So in addition to that, you'll notice that I'm, I always hold my camera on my, my strap. Because uh, you never know, you know, I could kick it over, uh, I could topple over if I move my bag. So uh, my, my top tip, simple tip to add to all the other tips, is just hold on to your strap lightly. So the, the best advice that I've ever received that's really impacted my photography is about pre-visualizing your, uh, your shot. So the more planning you put into a shot, uh, the more likely is that you get a, a good result at the end of it. So, you know, learn about, um, you know, how to read the way the light changes during the day. There's lots of apps out there that help you do that. Uh, learn how to read a map is a, you know, will help you get off the beaten track and find your own places. So learn how to navigate. Um, and another really good piece of advice is you know, pop into an art gallery and look at the way painters use light. They have to create light for their, their work and just get a better appreciation for light. And then that will make you more aware of how light changes during the day and how it lights up your scene. So, um, so they're the ones that really impacted me on my, journey, my continuing journey for photography. I only forget to record the outro to Terry's interview um, but I'm home now so I'm just back from a fantastic day with Terry and it was really enjoyable spending the afternoon with him I really do hope you enjoyed the uh, interview that I conducted with Terry so um, 
from another episode of my series in the landscape photographer profiles thank you very much for uh, watching i do hope you enjoyed it i really enjoyed the top tips from terry and the uh, best advice as well i do think going to an art gallery is a great idea so to be able to look at light because it is all about the light at the end of the day so um thanks very much i'll give terry's um channel or his uh, his social media uh, links below so please do check out his details give him a like and uh, thanks very much for tuning in as always do subscribe comment um, like and share and um, until the next time stronger for Never mind about the hat.